Welcome to NASCOM Technology and Leadership Forum 2024. I'm Anisha Nayar Dhawan. We are catching up with technology leaders to find out what impact Gen AI is going to have on our lives, our lifestyles and businesses now and in the future. I am now joined by Mr. Lakshmi Shankar, former Vice President, Product Strategy for Google Search. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Lakshmi. Pleasure. Pleasure being here. So, very recently, we've had the launch of Gemini 1.5, we've got Sora, we've got new tools of uh, Gen AI coming up, and this is for everyone to use. So it's it looks like a very exciting time. Can you tell us how do you see the how the future of how people look for information? Yeah, great question. Firstly, great to be here. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is an exciting time to be in. Um, I think as we start to see uh, the practical applications of pent-up research uh, that has been uh, done uh, over the years. Uh, we're just now at a point where um, the best minds are able to actually bring the best ideas through these applications. And I think what you're seeing with these transformers um, and uh, these breakthroughs uh, is just the start of many more applications um, than what we're starting to see. Um, when uh, when you know we first the papers were published in this space in 2020, I think it started to set the uh, the ground for how first of all large language models mm -hmm. can come through. So you then first saw, for example, ChatGPT uh, Model 3 at that time, and then you start to see very quickly followed by ChatGPT 4. And the time uh, difference between three and four that came out was uh, incredibly short. Um, and then you're now starting to see other people catch up. Uh, you talked about Gemini. Um, again, that's been in the work for a long, long time, and I'm very happy to see that come out. Uh, and each is trying to push the boundaries of uh, not only large language models, but also generative models uh, and multimedia uh, and multimodal models that are being created. And we will very soon start to see world models being created in terms of everything around us, understanding everything around us, er understanding every language around us, every dialects around us, every shape and every object and everything that we were able to do, uh, better understanding mm -hmm. uh, and uh, better creation uh, around us. And, uh, and I think this is incredibly exciting. Um, and so in terms of how people catch up and how people understand and stay abreast of all the things that are happening, I think the key thing is to uh, make this very real for you uh, in terms of look at the problems that are important in your day to day. If you are an entrepreneur or if you're a business professional or, or if you are a homemaker, uh, these technologies can actually make a big difference to you. But I think, uh, like me, you're talking from the point of view of technology. You know, I can make this better. Sure. I can do this better. I can use this, that, everything. But as a user, if I wanted information, I'd go to a search engine and look for it. Why do I need AI to do the same? Or yeah. Gen AI to do the same? How is it better than what I was doing earlier? Because see, I go and use uh, Google and I see something comes up, which is I think Gen AI and tells me one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's concise. But then I think, yeah, what's the veracity of this? Why should I trust this? Why should I not go to another, you know, source which says this is from so and so? So I would trust it more. Yeah. So I'm trying to it's understand. It's a great question. It's a great question, and I think that's a that's a conundrum that I think every that is unique uh, to every user um, as to what do they want, um, and I think there's there's this uh, fundamental tension in the space around uh, human agency, uh, which is, do I want uh, somebody to actually suggest tell me something. the answers? Yeah, or suggest something. Or suggest yeah. answers, um, or do I actually, yeah, so tell me the answer versus suggesting me the mm. answers. So telling me the answer is essentially, here's the question, just tell me the answer, I will take you on the face value and I'll move on with it, versus suggest, like you've been doing with Google so far, and suggest and let me make my mind right, up. Yeah. And where in that spectrum uh, do you want to draw the line is a very personal choice. Um, but the challenge from an industry perspective is that one of the reasons you've been going to Google search so far, or even when you say Google it, is that there is an assumption and a belief 
that it is the highest quality of information that is extremely trustworthy and useful. It has to hit all those three properties. When you have something summarized and give me the answers, it may not have all these three properties at this stage. And so the industry faces this challenge in how do we make sure it's useful? How do we make sure it's correct and it's trustworthy? And that's the challenge that all these uh, models have to face and solve for over the coming years. And you think they will tick off all these check boxes in the years to come so that we won't think again and we just take it as it is? I think it's uh, inevitable. Uh, because these, uh, I think the problems that you saw previously, be it hallucination um, or be it with uh, just generally trust, I think it is over time these models are going to become exceptionally um, uh, trustworthy because they're going to be trained on the most recent and most uh, largest set of data sets that's available. Uh, they're going to be comprehensive uh, and the same metrics that you today judge uh, a product like Google Search will be the same metrics you will start to actually take for granted uh, with these models. Then the question becomes, okay, for what type of applications do I want that? Um, I'll give you an example. If I want to plan my vacation, um, do I basically have it tell me that, okay, these are the parameters, go ahead and, and give me the answers? Um, or do you still want agency? Do you still want to be able to say that actually I have been to these locations already. I prefer to go to a colder destination. Mm -hmm. I want to actually have a beach holiday. And, uh, and so there's going to be an interesting race condition mm -hmm. between human agency and essentially augmentation uh, mm -hmm. and uh, AI augmentation, where it's going to learn and more and more about what you are preferences, yeah. and it's going to try and do the job for you as much as possible. But the question becomes still, what is the human agency? What level are you still not taking away mm -hmm. my answers, but still giving me control to make my own choices? That is the race condition that you're going to start to see play out in the mm -hmm. future. What about the future of content? Because just like Sora came and it's just text to video. Yes. So, you know, first people thought, oh, graphic designers' jobs are <laughs> <laughs> in question. Now you're thinking, video editors' jobs are in question. So, you know, what's the future of content like? Yeah, I, uh, I talked about this at NTLF uh, uh, yesterday, and uh, I really talk about essentially five things that I think are going to be important when it comes to uh, content. Um, number one, I think any content that uh, still preserves an element of human agency, that's the point that we talked about, which is I am still in control of this content that it's giving me and I'm, I'm able to make choices and provide inputs to what is actually being created uh, is still going to be incredibly important. Secondly, human knowledge is going to be incredibly important even in a world of growing synthetic knowledge. So even in a world where videos are being created for you, human created content is going to be premium. For example, I still want, even if I get an AI summary on Amazon that tells me why did somebody buy this, what are the features that mattered, to make my purchasing decision, I'm still looking for a human review mm. or for a restaurant, I still want somebody like me to actually tell me why I should go to that restaurant or why I should buy this before I make that choice. So human created knowledge is still going to be of paramount importance uh, to protect. Um, I think thirdly, I, we believe that over time, trust is trust in content is going to be uh, a huge battleground. Um, and the more the content and the models and the training data is observable and alterable, uh, observable in terms of what makes up that content so that we don't actually see these biases. Alterable in the sense that when we see these biases, we can correct them, um, is going to become important for the future of content. Um, and fourthly, we think the cost of content production is going to substantially come down so that when you have to create um, content, for example, be it a media agency or an advertiser or a, a Hollywood studio or a Bollywood studio, you can actually now not just have one blockbuster, but actually create lots of mini titles and mini series, not just one ad, lots of mini ads and mini series that engages deeply with your fan base. And because you're able to actually create multiple smaller versions or multiple titles of the main title and not just focus on the fandom, but actually focus on the masses who truly want to engage with that content. Um, so it's just fascinating. And the fifth that I talked about yesterday is this notion of bottled knowledge, which is that content that has unique data sets, 
that have distribution advantage um, and a, an unbelievably proprietary interface that's valuable are going to still command premiums. Um, so you can imagine a world where, for example, um, a, a training data, a, a model that actually advises on investment that I need to make that is trained on, let's say, last 30 years worth of um, Berkshire Hathaway's trading history, it's an agent that I would buy. Uh, and I would actually, that content is something that I would buy to help me make better decisions on my own stock picking. So it's just going to introduce a whole new set of business models, new ways of interacting. And so those are the five things that I see as going to be the future of content. How do you see business models evolving? Yeah, I think the, 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 the important aspects is what is going to be, at least in my, in my world of um, uh, advertising, and uh, you know, a lot of uh, search was powered by advertising, and uh, I think one of the things you're going to start to see is more and more movement from uh, advertising augmented with uh, newer uh, subscription-based uh, business models. Um, so for example, in the past, I used to search for a recipe. Um, in the future, I will search for uh, an agent that has all the recipes in the world that deeply understands me, and I would pay $3 or $5 for that agent to actually tell me uh, what I should cook. And it would be, over time, deeply personalized. It knows that I am a family of four and that you know I am a vegan, and then I basically uh, like to uh, buy from a particular set of store for, my, uh, for my, uh, the produce that I like to cook. And all of this information is actually trained by this model, and I'm actually using this model uh, to actually uh, buy and make my uh, decisions on what to cook, um, as opposed to going to uh, a web page and actually reading all of this that is actually supported through ads. And so we're going to see over a period of time just an example of a change or a shift in business models from um, you know much more agent-based, subscription-based, uh, uh, repositories that I'm paying for, um, as opposed to essentially uh, ad-supported business models. Right, and what does the future of jobs looks li look like? You know, the way you're talking is like, uh, first I thought that my effort will be reduced, now I feel um, perhaps I don't even need to imagine things. I, I, somebody will suggest something to me, what I need to cook based on what I've shopped previously. So what is the future of jobs? Yeah, I think, I think I'm, I'm probably, uh, uh, one of the folks who strongly believes that there are net uh, more jobs that are actually going to get created than taken away because of AI. Because I believe that over time, a um, lot more of the jobs that um, could be aided or augmented through AI in terms of productivity enhancements would actually be, uh, would be uh, we would leverage AI for those which means that you have now pent up energy, pent up time to actually reskill and upskill yourself to jobs that actually can't be done by AI. And so it boils down to uh, jobs that require highest level of critical thinking and systemic thinking, jobs that require highest level of uh, human collaboration and brainstorming and problem solving, um, and uh, uh, jobs that require uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, deep level of um, uh, analysis uh, are just jobs that can't be taken away. And, and so, you know, these skills that I would invest in uh, uh, would be, you know, uh, creativity, critical thinking, and collaboration. Those types of jobs are not going to go away anytime soon. Right. And what does India need to do to be center stage of this Gen AI era coming up? Can, can we actually do it? Absolutely. I mean, I think um, I think we all are seeing the energy, um, uh, and uh, NASCOM certainly over the last two days. I, I just walk away with uh, just the innovation and uh, the mindset and the embracing of new technology that uh, seems to be happening here. Um, so I think the qu also you're seeing uh, incredible levels of investment from government, um, the private public sector partnerships. Um, I don't think all of the modes that traditionally in hindered um, from our level the playing field for the world and India to operate in that world are, are pretty much being uh, taken away. Uh, and so there is no um, unfair advantage that 
other markets or other companies have. Um, so then it's just down to basically how hungry and how ambitious uh, and how creative India wants to be in this space with our talent uh, or the talent that exists in India um, and the resources that exist. Uh, I expect um, India to actually leapfrog, much like India leapfrog the mobile revolution, to actually leapfrog uh, in this AI revolution. And, uh, and I'm, I'm just excited uh, because I think India is poised for greatness. Next. Thank you so much, Lakshmi, for speaking with us. Yeah, you're very, very uh, upbeat and optimistic about Gen I and the future in India. It is good to know that. Thank you so much for speaking with it's us. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. Take care.